Welcome to Biggest Geekest. We are your hosts. I am Joe. And I'm Randy. This is episode 115 of our show, and the date is Tuesday, November 29th, 2022. Yeah, man. And, and we are coming at you from Linux land. <laughs> we are. You are? I am. What is that? So what does that mean? That means I'm running Linux on my machine. Is it working better? Well, it works. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's better. Yeah, my uh, computer... Uh, updated and i think some people call it thrashing so it would go through an update but not be able to complete the update yeah and then go back and forth and uh yeah it was uh no fun i spent a lot of time trying to figure out why the windows update wasn't working and then i just said screw windows i'm going linux i'm out man you windows screwer that's a good thing that's not a great um, label. <laughs> Windows screwer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's probably not. So, no, no. so, oh, pretty good uh, crowd in the house. We got yep, L. Yep. L just summarized our whole podcast for Arn Man. So Arn Man's out. At the beginning, uh, L said uh, before you got started, said something about tournaments, which are dumb for T. Here, I'm put it up there. L said earlier. He preempted the program. Well, tournaments, which are done for T T T RPGs, can't have house rules. And home play is only house rules. So no two house rules play the same way. Followed up by, unless you have a group of thugs from Illinois coming to break your tables for not doing everything that way. Is that is that a is that a reference to like a um those dudes that are like the O Bro SR people? Probably. I don't know if they're based in uh in uh in uh Illinois, but uh mm-hmm. He probably just, you know, pulled a state out of his butt. Right. But yeah, he said that. So, yeah, we got the, got the crowd, man. Uh, Bruce is here, man of war, neighbor of the beast. Oh. So, cool. Oh, Chicago. Yeah, the windy city, uh, city of uh, of organized crime. Yeah. So I'm going to be gaming twice, back to back, Thursday and Friday. If all goes well. And that's pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to just have to punch in the nuts then. <laughs> well, I'm going to be uh, running our game, our last session of OSE, and then uh, I'm going to be playing Riss tomorrow night on, uh, I think, Max's channel. That'll be fun. Got my character all made. I'm ready to dominate. So should be fun. Good deal. What are you playing? I'm playing a crazy. Oh, that's right. You said a crazy. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So, yeah, those that are watching, if you want to see me get crazy, it's going to happen tomorrow night. I got plans. I got props coming. I'm ready. You have yeah. props? I have props, dude. Oh, no. I'm gonna, <laughs> but I you're have... playing online, so what's... The... You'll see. No, I won't, probably. You need to watch me, Joe. You, you know you love to watch me role play. <laughs> Joe loves watching people role play. Oh, it's the worst. <laughs> uh, Malachi, he's got it. He's got the right of it. Ah, so Randy is playing himself. Truth, mm-hmm. son. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, oh, I don't want to give it away, Darth. He says, "What disorders are you starting with?" I do have one. And it's <laughs> we're only level one, so I got one little drawback. So, and it's not really, um, yeah. Easy, Martinson. Don't give stuff away. You're teasing. Friday night. Yes, I think I said Friday night. Yeah, yeah. Thursday yeah. is a waste. Could be teasing my character because my character has something to do with the night. So it'll be fun. Are you scared of the darkness? <laughs> Wait and see, baby. <laughs> That's going to be so good. Or it's going to suck. One or the other. We'll see. <sighs> well, look, look. Ma- Maliki took uh, a fan. Oh, oh, okay. Son, son. Okay. You're probably only a couple of years older than me. Oh, no, no. I didn't mean that. I was not talking down to you. His, I say son. I his say couple of years, his couple of years 
is the same as most people's 10. Yes. I'm, so. It's like dog ears. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. Oh. But, no. Randy's character has mathabetus, probably. <laughs> a rare condition. Yeah, a rare condition. Hmm. So oh. besides playing, oh, what's this? Um, our resident neighbor of the beast, um, the old geek sent me down a rabbit hole, finishing up a Trampier article while listening. Oh, do Trampier. you do you know who Trampier is? Yeah, he's David Trampier. He was, a, I believe, an artist in the old school, right? Man of War. Help me out. That sounds right, David Trampier. So he was an artist from the old, like even pre AD and D. Unless I'm wrong, someone help me out. I don't know. I've heard of Trampier. So. Oh yeah, welcome phone guy. Yeah. Oh, it's just just phone guy from the DVR army. Oh well. Sorry, right. we like phone him. guy. That's great. At least we got the one. <laughs> Tonka Todd's in. I know. I saw. Uh, who was it? Oh, Hungry Ewok. Hey, we've got quite a crowd. Green Apple. I'm just running down the list. Good folks in tonight. Patrick. Sweet. Hopefully, our man will show. They won't be scared. Ah, Malachi helping out. There it is. Randy Nichols, uh, he did the statue cover of 1E. And I think Elle is saying he did Wormy. Remember the cartoon or Wormy? So, yeah. Yeah. Correct. Legend. Okay, AD&D too. Okay, my bad. Okay, I thought it was pre-AD&D. What's up, Shadow? Everybody's calling in, calling in, correcting me. That's cool. Holla. Holla. Let us know how wrong Randy is in the comments. Yes. Tell me about my wrongness. Yes. This is, we all enjoy it when we get to tell him how wrong he is. It does happen so rarely, so go ahead. <laughs> well, I guess the only drawback for Linux, well, there's two. Mm -hmm. One is um, there's no, for the printer I have, there's no um, support for a wireless connection. So I have to stay connected with wired to my PC, which makes it inconvenient because I wouldn't, I'm not able to put the printer where I want. How dare you be inconvenient? How dare they at Linux not support <laughs> my printer? They don't, it's not that they don't support wireless printers at all. It's just this particular one does not have a printer driver for Linux. It even, the funny thing is, um, when you go to sites that have lists of um, software you can download for or for drivers and whatnot, it'll have all of the uh, operating systems, well, the three main, Windows, Mac, and Linux. And then it will have a line through Linux. And I'm like, why, why do you even list it? If you're just going to, it has a word that says download mm -hmm. and then a line through it. Oh. It's stupid. <laughs> The stupidity of it why all. even why even have it there <laughs> hmm. or you Flady can, hey. says evening gents hit that like button button thank you Flady. do that so he is that. and i was thinking about maybe um firing up obs and doing some things uh stream wise through obs it's a software but uh, it acts a little differently in linux so that's always awesome right so not altogether considering um, uh, the mic and the camera and all the other things that that um, I would like to have work. Those are the only two things that are not working as they did before. Everything else, though. Okay, L has posted some math, and I will challenge him to solve that equation. You can solve it by getting zero on one side and factoring, sir. <laughs> it's rare that such a high high degree equation is that simply solved. L must be showing his algebraic skills. Or is that sheer luck? <laughs> I just solved it. I have the solutions. If anybody wants to know. <laughs> Congratulations. I'm sure everybody's very excited. Yes, we're, we're all ecstatic that you could solve the equation. It is of quadratic form, even though it's the sixth power. I know. 42, actually, Flady. Not just four. It's 42. 42. There you go, Malachi. You, you, you know that. So close on how you're going to catch him, Clarice. 
<laughs> not really. Yes, Darth. The the thing. Um, so there's a, a YouTuber I looked at. I look at. Yeah, I just put the Sorry. YouTuber on my screen and look at him. Oh, um, YouTuber. YouTuber has some instructional videos for OBS. And um, when he's going over putting up text like a, a, a title for a screen, um, the type of text um, source is different for Windows than it is for Linux. And with the Windows version, you can center your text. You can't do that with Linux. I mean, you can't you can't center it like you would normally think you could. It's kind of oh. stupid. Hmm. And it's been an issue for at least five years. Really? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. That's not normal. Yeah. Look, I, everybody knows Randy is not a computer dude. But in computers, stuff's happening, dude. They're moving. Things well, change. Fixed. It's free. It's free software. Ah, keyword. Yeah. So sometimes that can mean slow development. Mm. All right. You ready to? So it's been my computer problems have been going on for over a week. So Boom. I've been slow to do things. Um, gotcha. If Mr. Max Boivin shows up, give me I'm a fine. heads up. He he was so kind. He was kind enough to order one of uh, our products, uh, hardcover. Well, the only hardcover we have so far, and. Uh, there's a little, there's a little, um, there's a little uh, glitch. If you don't, yeah, it, there you go. Dungeons and Delvers. That's right. David Giles. Yes, this, this, display its girth. Look at that bad boy. Look at that girth. And it's beautiful. It's got some sweet art. That's, I just, I like the art style, man. It's quite all right. I am digging this. And it's a pretty book. Uh, the paper quality is good. I'm telling you, people, the binding's solid, though it has that little gap when you open it at the spine. You know how it opens up? Mm -hmm. I'm not, a, I like them a little, I would like it a little tighter. I'm, I'm spoiled because I've also gotten a Atlas of the Latter Earth by uh, Kevin Crawford and completed my Star Worlds Without Numbers uh, book order. And he has such a really nice binding, but this is still really good binding. Um, yeah, I do. Uh, I do like his uh, book. I haven't got to read much of it, but I've read some, and I, I'm a liking. I'm liking what I'm reading. So, but anywho, yeah. Good deal. Um, no, I don't think so. Um, Elsa's dice pool better. I don't know. I don't. I got to read the full thing. That's, that's more me. I'm yeah. I'm more the dice pool than Randy is. I don't dislike the dice pool, but I like. It's only um, a feeling. It's a feel. It's mm -hmm. uh, there's no you can't really put in an objective dice pools better because X Y and Z and D 20s yeah. better because X Y and Z. They both accomplish essentially the same things. They do, and they can. And it's it's uh, to each their own. I mean, yeah. I, I get the tactile love we talked about it before of holding a handful of dice and trying to get all these sixes on a D8 or whatever your target number is. That's pretty cool. Um, but I do like the D20. I think it's because I'm old and I'm steeped in it. So don't like changing. <laughs> so that's, I that's, like, like, it's a, that's like me with uh, card mechanics in my role-playing games. Right. It does not do the same thing as chocolate and peanut butter. Right. right. <laughs> chocolate and peanut butter go together fairly well. But um, card, game, card mechanics and role-playing games are kind of a clash kind of clashy uh we are talking about dice pools as a mechanic patrick not a game um yeah i think uh, i think david leans toward the d22 his personal preference i've chatted with him quite a bit we'll talk about that more later on yeah um, um and uh i do uh have some things to say about riffs i'm making my character i got to come back and re-familiarize myself with riffs so some good and some bad but mostly good um, a suggestion from LX Split. I have not heard of this software, so I will look it up. Um, if it has good support on Linux, uh, there's another one that this fellow that uh, he is a YouTuber who who uh, provides instruction and suggestions and tips on you YouTubing, right? For doing live streams. So 
he's recently had a video up and I don't remember the name of it, but there's a new, a new contender out there for the live stream um, softwares. So Patrick, uh, I assume you're asking, yes, that um, dungeon that Randy Dungeons. just had up. Huh? Yeah. But the dice pool version. Yep. Yeah. I have both. Can you get a print copy of the dice pool version? I have the PDF. He has it. He has one. I'm oh, uh, okay. let, well, hold on. Hold on. Let me see. Uh, burp, 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 burp. David Guile filter. No, but uh, I do love this cover. I think it's neat. Um, I just love the the. This book has a good feel too. I, I don't know if I can describe it. It's almost like it's not leather, but it it's got a really good feel. I don't even know how to. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he has that the dice pool version option in, for... in hardback on mm -hmm. on um on my site. Yeah, yeah, it's probably too much to do the whole thing that way. Uh, Flady was asking, "What was that YouTuber's name that does the, how the how to tutorials?" Is that the one you were watching, Joe? Uh, yeah. Hold on a second. I can pull that up. Mm -hmm. I have one. Oh, boop, boop, boop. Michael Firer, F E Y R E R. I will put a link in the show notes. Okay. Let me see if I can. No. Control C. Yes, so I am going to... Oh, that's weird. What's that? I thought I put more in here, but I guess I didn't. No, I asked for something else. I'm thinking out loud. Okay. So anything exciting? I know over Thanksgiving, we didn't do the podcast regular, but Joe had the stream and I jumped in late. I had some things I had to get done and Joe stayed focused and motivated, so we did a little chill stream. We had a good time. Bruce covered. I'd like to thank him again for covering for me. And I joined the last few minutes or the last hour or so. We had fun. It was a good little chat chat time last week. So Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Hope everybody had a nice Thanksgiving. I know I uh, ate a lot and it was yummy. So very satisfying. Good time off, too. Didn't want to go back to work this week, but I did. Well, you're only back to work for... A few weeks and then you have Christmas break. I know three weeks, technically six classes per class. See, six <laughs> meetings per class, six meetings per class, right? So, yeah, I'm down five now, five because I'm done with one Monday, Tuesday. So now I've got my Wednesday, Thursday, and then I'm down to four. We count down to faculty count down to so not much more to do. So, I put the link up in the description. So, and I'm getting a very annoying um, funking sound. You are. I'm not hearing it, dude. It's just coming to you, I guess. Okay. Hmm. Well, if you're not hearing it, I'm not going to worry about it. Yeah. Shall we jump into the main topic? We shall. Okay. Cool. Let me get to it. All right. So, house rules. Yes, sir. So, 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 house rules. So that means uh, in the house before the street lights come on, uh, yep. sound, uh, you know, no shoes quiet, quiet by 10, quiet no shoes in the house, that kind right. of thing. Right, right. Is that what we're talking about? Sort of. Or maybe this definition. Um, I kind of called it. I'm just going to read it. Uh, this is a dictionary.com, a rule that is used in a game only in a specific place hmm. as at a, and they say at a particular casino only among a certain group of players. Well, the casino example is not related to us, but in a specific place. So maybe your house, maybe your game store, maybe your group, right? So we're talking about house rules and D and D in particular, because that'll be our main focus, but other RPGs as well. Um, so it's defined as something you use at your house. So, if we think, if I can think recently, I know, well, not real recently, one house rule we had during, it was during the late, it was late three, five, and through most of Pathfinder, we made some changes to how metamagic worked. Remember that? 
that if you picked it, you could meta magic three spells or use it three times a day on a basis. Um, so if you picked quicken spell, you could do that. I think I think I lowered that to once a day. I think I was much harsher. I had some rules for the more powerful meta magic, but you didn't have to prepare them in advance. You could just do it, and you can prepare them in advance. So. Um, yeah, well, I think originally Bruce makes a point here. He says, uh, uh, improve critical stacks with keen weapon. It did early on in 3.0, so you must have kept that for your Pathfinder game. I think that's fine. Um, right. Um, and that's why a lot of people, they do ha do the house ruling because they don't like a new rule or they thought an old rule was clunky or bad. Um, like the, uh, um, Meta magic rules that you were mentioning, we yeah. all thought that they were kind of underwhelming for third edition. Unless you pick, I mean, there were like a handful, like um, not maximize, but the other one. Uh, Empower. Was, Empower, you guys thought was mostly worth it. Worth it. Yeah. Quicken could be, but you had to be really high level, or you're like, man, I don't have because you had to have like a. If you wanted to quicken magic missile, you had to burn a fifth level spell slot. You're like, eh. but if you wanted to quicken disintegrate well you couldn't do that if you could sit if you could quicken oh, right. if you could quicken i don't know something what's a cool fifth level spell quicken oh, haste oh sorry no, we have quicken haste that would be a seventh level slot but that's dang near work it i mean, I mean work it worth it um but yeah because then you can immediately cast another spell yeah um it's interesting a lot of a lot of people in the chat are saying they they definitely uh love the house rules it, it did seem Tucker todd makes a good point i remember this um house rules were all but mandatory for me as a kid in the late 70s early 80s when i started playing it seemed like it was encouraged when well, you would read the early books they would say hey man do your own thing it was a diy thing early because um the game rules were more of a framework than they uh, became in third and later editions so you did have to make rulings on the spot or yep. perhaps say, this is how we're going to do things here on out and make a rule. Although the whole rulings versus rules mantra that a lot of people use, I think is a bit overdone um, because a ruling is a rule. It's just ad hoc. Yeah. Yeah. And when people say they prefer rulings over rules, they just say, they're just saying they prefer their own rules. I think I think so too. Uh, here's one that I thought was interesting: Darthic in three five. If you roll a nat twenty when confirming a critical, you rolled a third time, and if that was also a nat twenty, you insta kill the opponent. Yeah, I've heard of that. Um, that's not a bad one. We I've I used to I love the idea of confirming criticals when it first came out, but I really lost taste. I prefer, and I know it'll happen more often. I prefer if you hit a twenty, it's crit double damage, move on. Or if you want to do critical tables, that's fine too. Um, I, I think um, the idea was that if you needed like a really high number just to hit them, mm -hmm. you didn't want the natural 20 that you might have needed to hit the person to also be a critical. So you needed to roll again to see if you hit. But it was, it, hey, Mr. Max. Um, Don't want it happen again, dude. I know well, you're in that's, He's in Canada. He, he is allowed. Okay. He ordered a book on him on the site, and um, it doesn't it doesn't tell you that you haven't. Um, it skips a step. Let's just say that. Uh, okay. So I had to fix the order and make sure that his book okay got to the printing um, phase, and um, that has happened. I can even Monsieur Boivin, you are excuse. Well done, sir. Uh, oh, Tonka Todd's. Now this is surprising. Now, Joe, did you? I don't know if you, we didn't do. We we played. I was a DM like all the time in the early days. Tonka Todd said the fun for me was learning other house rules at different tables growing up. Yeah, that, that, that could be interesting. Was that fun for you when you were in the military and going around and playing different people's games? No, <laughs> no, you didn't find that fun. No, it it could be. Some people had interesting rules. Other people had crazy rules. Yeah. And you're like, what are you doing here? This this is really awful. <laughs> yeah. But when you when you when you cycle through a lot of different tables like you do yeah. in the military, because you know people deploy and you're not around the same people all the time, especially in training situations. So. Um, it can be a challenge, 
So you get to see a, a wide variety of play styles, which is why I like ours. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, once you've seen a bunch, I, I, I haven't traveled nearly as much as Joe, but I have played enough at conventions. I mean, I'm, you know, 20 plus years. Yeah, and that's another way to discover. I have uh, learned people doing their own thing. Some were fun, some were crazy. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, this is a, a rule I like. Malachi says uh, 5e at his FLGS, max on the die is a critical, and then roll the second. Uh, because yeah. it always sucks to roll double ones when you're rolling two dice. Yes. Yeah, it's not much of a critical. Oh, before we keep going. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Max, I'm going to send you an email, but I just want to let you know your book is expected is expected to ship on the 11th. So you will have it before Christmas, which is awesome. That is a good thing. Um, so um, so we, we got the idea of a house. So is, does removing a rule or a class or a feature or something, does that count as a house rule? I would say yeah. Well, sure. Just I mean, just saying, we don't credit my table next. Yeah, that's that's anything that deviates. Yeah, because like from, think, from the baseline, sure, that's a house rule. Yeah, I've not been listening to Tinkar as much as I used to. Does anyone know who listens to him? Does he still preach that he doesn't like crits because it happens more against the players than for them? Well, that that is something that he said. Yeah, and I'm sure there's no. There, there's, I can't imagine that he's had any experience that negates that at this point. And I don't. I mean, crits, crits. Correct me if I'm wrong. Were crits written in the rule? I think we covered this before, but I can't recall. Crits were never. Crits in particular. We keep talking about crits. This is not the crit show, but um, crits were not in D and D until 3.0 as an official rule. Is that true? It's something like that. It was not originally there. Yeah. It was discussed in Dragon Magazine ah. back and forth. Uh, along with dual wielding weapons and different things like that. So at what point it really became like official, I can't remember. Okay. Looks like shadows bail and honest. Have fun. Um yeah, Kill Raven says he likes the exploding dice. That is fun. Um the thing is um when you're you've played as much as we have, and maybe it doesn't take that long. You can kind of get tired of just hit or miss, yes, and that's and that or success or, or fail, and those are your options. It can get boring. Mm -hmm. So when you have a variety of different kinds of successes or failures, like a critical failure, we don't do all that a whole lot. We're more into critical successes, which is a critical hit, not so much for skills or and whatnot, but right. it makes it a little more interesting. Yeah, um, removing a whole. So this this leads into the other question too. I was thinking, Joe. Um, because I, I, I hope Legion would be here tonight. Because I think he had a he had a an episode on this way back when. Is if you do a homebrew setting, homemade setting, your own setting, is there a difference? I think there's a I think there's a subtle difference between a homebrew setting and um, a house rule. Oh, what's Malachi saying? Page sixty one two e dmg critical hits optional rule. Okay. They were optional. Okay. Right. They were baked in for 3.0. Was, was there something in um, Arc Unearthed Arcana? I wouldn't be shocked. I maybe just missed it. Yeah. We did. Well, it's been a long time, so we may not have missed it. We just might not remember. I, I know we at our table, I never, we always did D20 was double damage. I mean, if you rolled a 20, it was double damage. We right. did that every version of D&D &D we ever played till third. Then we started doing the confirmation and all that good stuff stuff um yeah that's that's not uncommon but do you think uh like if i build a homebrewed setting and i say look in this setting there's only sorcerers there's no classic magic users there's only casters that get their power innately and they cast them on the fly they learn just a few powers and they can just cast on the spells um if i if i change that because my setting has a really cool idea for why sorcerers would exist and not wizards i'm not sure that's exactly the same as a house rule I mean, it's connected to it for sure, maybe intimately so. Well, if it's if what you if what happens at your table is different from the baseline rules well, or expectations, I would say house rule. Okay, okay, okay. Bruce, Bruce. Officially, critical hits were actually official in combat and tactics, nineteen ninety five or nineteen ninety four, and they sucked. 
-hmm. Combat and Tactics. Was that one of the black books? Yes. That was a preview of a third edition for the most part. Um, David Gow, being smart, thinks like me. He says, um, Joe, you can put that up here? Thanks. I'd categorize house rules as modifying the base system game, independent of the setting. Yes, but I'm really, I do see what Joe's saying because. If your setting rules, changes the rules. rules. Yeah. So if, if you have um, setting info that's divergent some way, somehow, from a, a, a core book's um, implied setting, but it doesn't really change how you play very much at, or at all, mm -hmm. then it's not really much of a rule. It's just flavor. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. Darth goes a little further. He says, I would consider any changes from the base as house rules, even if it's for a setting. Dark Sun is full of house rules, even if printed in a book. Hmm. Well, well, that's the question. Then. So well, hold on, though. If you're playing Dark Sun, are you playing D&D? Well, it says D&D on the book. Okay. But it's not It's not the standard rule. It's a D&D variant. Yep. So that oh, I would call it a variant. So it's a variant. It's not a house rule. Yeah. yeah. It's a setting. I wouldn't call that a house. I wouldn't call the Dark Sun house rules. Because the only work of the Dark Sun? Well, setting. no, it's just, it's house rules are rules changes that occur at your table based on your changes of the rules that are in the books. I wouldn't call those house rules. And if it, and Ma, like, and Max is saying, what about optional rules? They're optional. Mm hmm. Whether I don't you think have that. them or not. So if you, if you don't use an optional rule, that's not house ruling. That's just your ch choice to use it or not. That's why it's optional. Now, it's interesting. So I don't want to get too far because we're getting kind of pretty. I don't want this to get too crazy because we'll have our, this is a splitting hairs. Uh, Malachi says the setting is just a set of house rules codified. That's what Joe's saying. Um, no, it's not. No, no, you're not. You're saying the opposite. Yeah. Hold on, because that's that was my claim. I wasn't sure a house setting was. I, I wasn't sure a homebrew setting was house rules. No, no, okay. So, because homebrew setting, come. a setting, which Dark Sun is a setting. Mm -hmm. Malachi is saying, or Malachi is saying, is house rules. I'm mm -hmm. going to say I disagree. Your setting that you make is your setting. And if your setting doesn't change any rules that play on at the table, it's just flavor, then it, you're not house ruling anything. You're just providing a setting. But if your setting says, well, long ago, wizards, the 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 um, way wizards do their thing was destroyed, and now there's no wizard, so you can't play wizard. Well, you have a house rule. You can't play wizards. You know, for example. So you're saying settings can have house rules. And homemade cannot can also not have house rules. Yeah. Okay. So nothing in an unearthed arcane. It was just a, a guess. Um, it's interesting. Killraven says whether or not an optional rule in the book is used or not is a house rule. So it can change from table to table. If we go back to the definition, which is a rule that is used in a game only in a specific place or only a certain number of players. So. Yeah, but if you divorce that from the fact that it changes the game, if you're using a rule that differs from the base rules, that's a house rule. Mm -hmm. But it's if you play just, it, if it's written in the book and they tell you you have the option of using it or not, whether you use it or not, you would say it's not a house rule. Say that again. Suppose you have an optional rule. What was the one that uh, Mr. Boivin mentioned? No, someone mentioned like um, death and dying, I believe, in third edition, 3.0. If someone took, what was it, 50 points or more of damage in one shot, they'd have to make a fortitude saving throw or die. Yeah. 10 plus half the damage dealt or some kind of crazy, or the DC was the damage dealt. That's an optional rule. If you decide to use that, then it's not a house rule. Because it's, so. it's, it's an option. I, I think it's fun. This is fun. We're splitting hairs. I'm not. It's yeah, and we are. If oh, you if you want to call it a house rule, I'm not going to come to your house and thump you on the head. That's completely up to you to say that. I disagree. 
Right. Optional rules are optional rules. Yeah. House rules are rules you make up at your table that differ from the base rules. So that's that's how that. So how about we just say that's what we're going with? <laughs> okay. No, as uh, for our discussion. Right. For our discussion, okay. Because we can't we can't uh, have you know sliding you know definition. So if you change the rules, right? I agree, L, but. No, it doesn't matter. Um, so if you change the rules, we can go with the idea that if you change the, the rules that are in the book, you do something. So how about this? Could you, I guess it's a house rule. If you add a rule, if there's a gap there, like if there was yeah, no yeah. grappling that's rules, rules. You're, that's the whole rulings, not rules. Uh, welcome, Legion. I'm glad you're here. We're doing a discussion probably you'll be familiar with. Yes, and you'll enjoy the discussion because we're being incredibly pedantic. <laughs> yes, we are, and it's so fun. Um, so me and Joe are going to say, I agree with you, Joe. If it's an optional rule, if it's in the book, it's not a house rule. It doesn't Whether you make, decide to use it or not. But you could have a different experience at a different table because one house rule is in there and another one is not. Uh, Max believes optional is... Well, what is Max saying? Legion, uh, house rules are ruling you make at your table, whether written, optional, or changed. Okay, that's that's a definition. Um, <laughs> yes, Patrick, you are right. Splitting hairs over definition is the most D and D nerd argument in the history of D and D nerd. It, it is what we do. It is. What we're, we're not playing. We're talking about playing. Right. right. But we're not watching playing because if we have the time to watch playing, we should have the time to play. Oh, time out. Legion, my character is done for Friday. I'm playing a crazy, and it's going to be awesome. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> so my character is finished. So I'm excited. But anyway, back to this. So if you fill in a gap, that's going to be a house rule for us. Um, let's get away from you know splitting hairs and defining house rules. because we can. Oh, all... Come on, Max just got here. We need you know, a little... We need to explore the pedantry a bit more look at this he says if you make a ruling it's a house rule and i would agree if that ruling stays the same what if it doesn't the next week doesn't ruling, matter the rulings have at that moment it's a house rule but you never use it again yeah but again we're splitting hairs and being pedantic <laughs> incredibly so as soon okay, as you... i'm also i'm also going to say yeah. whether we call optional rules mm -hmm that you use that are written in the book, but yeah. you choose not to use it. That's a house rule. Whether we say that or whether we determine that or not, someone else does it, says that it is, or someone else says it's not, or you're crazy or whatever. <laughs> Nobody cares. Not really. Legion, uh, Legion still has to finish his character. So you oh, can't play until he finishes his character. Oh, he'll be done. He knows the rules inside and out. I got a little rant tonight, Mr. Legion. He's hanging around. I'm going to rant on riffs a minute. I still like it, but I got a rant for you. Um, player's perspective. How much is too much? If you go to a table and someone's, I'm changing this, I'm changing that, I'm changing this, I'm changing that. Some people might like that. It's That's okay. totally subjective. Sure. How about some, pe some people don't want any changes and say you must Play rules as written. And if you use house rules, you're not playing D&D. Any house rules at all. That's bro SR, folks. I have heard that. You got to do, what do they call that? That timekeeping thing? Not real time, but time passes all the time. While you're playing, if you play for two hours. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a, um, actual timekeeping or something like that, right? So every day that passes in the real world, passes a, a day passes in your game world um darth made a comment so this is about how much is too much he said for him i guess when reading the book is pointless play a different game i think i agree thank yeah, you, if you have so many house rules that you have replaced the entire book yeah yeah um one to one time arn man i would actually claim he says you can't play gygax rules as written you play them interpreted I would say that's true for all the games because we're going to get to that rules as written rules as intended. That was a, that the first time I really heard of raw versus RAI was in third edition. Yeah. But there's no sure. such thing as RAI rules as intended. Yeah. There's no, no such there there's, there's no such thing as the spirit of the game. How can you determine that easily? 
What are they how can how can you determine that and then say this is the spirit? Somebody else next to you says, I don't think so. I think it this is. Oh, well, I'm the dungeon master, so what does it matter what the person next to me says? Correct. <laughs> people, there's no singular way to call say unless the unless the let's say they there's um sidebars that show you the intent that describe the intent, that's yep. fine. But if all you have is rules, you might be able to guess at their intent. But, um, I mean, ap apart from things that are very straightforward, like you roll a d20 to make it to hit roll, well, the intention is you roll a d20 if you need to make it to hit roll. Yeah. Look at Dave. We'll come back to that, Dave. David Gall said something. I think Joe and I probably agree with that. I know I do. He says, once third edition came out, everyone got really anal about following rules. Yeah, that became a whole thing. Yeah. yeah um, you say there's not rules as intended. I'm just I saying say, that you can't necessarily de derive a singular rules necessarily and a singular intention because uh, intention is kind of subjective. True. I, I can't re read the creators. Well, Patrick makes a good point, but I think you're right too, Joe. If the creator of the game is asked to clarify rules intended, then RAI can certainly exist. Sure. If you well, can call them up on the phone right. while you're reading the book. Which I think that happened to Gygax a lot, right? Um, or they have a, a if they have a blog, you can get get that. But if you're just reading the the book by itself, sometimes you can't really get that. Um. And guess I, what? And guess what? What? I don't care what they intended. No, you don't, huh? You no. Only care There's a rule right? that says what you do. This is what you do. I don't care what they intended. Even if it's like beyond stupid. If the result is ridiculous. Well, if the rule like as written like you is, like can grapple a giant, that's stupid. Right, that's stupid. <laughs> I don't care. Like I said, I don't care what their intent is. Okay. Oh, so you're saying from both ends, you right. could either play it as is, or you could say, "Let's throw it out because it's dumb." Yeah. I don't. I don't need no intent. I don't think it adds anything. Um. Legion says, good news, we have brains. These brains let us complete compile information to make an informed decision. Therefore, we can determine intent. Or we can think we can. Well, we may not know the intent. It's still though. subjective. It's not objective. You're not fully. I agree. We can't know. We can't know what's in the writer's brain. But I think we can sit at our table and go, this is what I want. And everybody at the table can say, yeah, Randy, that sounds better than this stupid rule. Let's. I think they meant this to be this way because we'd like to see it be this way. And I don't mean overly. I don't mean like trying to really bend it crazy. It's like. Why are we adding plus two when every other condition that's similar to it added plus one? Let's just make it plus one. So, is... yeah, you want consistency. That's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but um, honestly, if the if the, the rule is clear and it tells you how to do a thing, I don't really care what the intent behind it is. Oh, well, no. uh, maybe. I mean, what What does it add? Well, if I don't like the rule, it adds, it tells me that I need to do something else. <laughs> yeah, but you liking the rule or not liking the rule is generally the force from intent. It's just you look at the rule and it's stupid, like halflings being able to have a 30 strength and uh, just naturally and be able to uh, hip toss a giant. Yeah. That's dumb. I agree. I don't care what oh. their intent is. Oh, to that point, yes. And their intent is not to make any kind of realism at all, but just to make a game where everybody can have every character as Max Love, be every race, all the levels they want, and do all they want all the time. Which right. will so, be back for third. Maybe it's commie role playing. Maybe it's, um, I was going to say pedantry, but it's more, it's the other word when where you are placating a crowd and doing what they say because you, they, you want them to like you. Mm -hmm. What's the word? It starts with a P. Can't remember it. Um. Anyway, Asifah? no. Placate? I said placate. placate. No, stop oh. placate. It's some other p word. Anyway, yeah. You can, um, biggest pragmatist. Yes, <laughs> very biggest good. pragmatist. Right. So I'm just saying, um, you could it could, like Max likes to call third edition commie role playing, but mm -hmm. maybe they were just playing to the crowd and following trends. Right. Oh. David may have pandering. it. Pandering. There pandering. you go. Yes. Thank Kill you. Robin, 
kind of got two discussions here at once, but they're so good. I don't want to let it go. Kill Raven at L, but this is good. Not in my experience. In 2E, when I said no to something, there was rarely pushback. Fact. Nah, Joe would give me the hard time. We were the same age. He'd cry a little bit and say, shut up. In 3E, the same people felt they had they had grounds to argue. Yeah. I've said Joe before. I think I think third edition, one of the biggest failures, one of the wrong moves they did was putting all that what seemed to be power in the hands of the player. They didn't technically. Rule zero existed. It is written in third edition. I've talked about it on this podcast, but it seemed like it really didn't matter. Um, oh, <laughs> Legion's changed his stance, Joe. He says, no, third edition is commie RP. I'm, I'm modifying. No, that's that's his that's his stance. That's, no, that's... He said, it's the art, 99 version of equity. Well, I guess it, I don't know. It's a, it's, it, that could be, but right. That's an opinion. I mean, if if we get like somebody's diary from that era, and they and they turn out to be gigantic communists, and yeah, we wanted some to subvert the the game in the communist way, sure. But um, all race, all class is something that's existed in almost every other game at the time, so it could easily just be a trend. We want to be like all the other ones. Could be. Could be. I, I could be wrong. I don't know. So if there's going to be house I don't, I don't care. Well, tell me this. With house rules, back to the question then. So I was talking to Joe. So um, Darth says, if, if, if playing, reading the book's no good, do you have your limit? At some point, will you say, why are we playing? Or will you be like, I don't like all these house rules? Okay. It depends. Mm -hmm. If it's gameplay rules, like um, um, initiative and... Um, order of combat and stuff like that. I can roll with just about any changes, but if you're making a lot of wholesale changes to character classes and stuff, um, um, once you start dipping in, dipping into that, then you're, you could be invalidating any purchase I make. Right. If you make enough changes. So, um, I think that there does come a point where in you, you'd have to do it in some sort of order. Like you, you would say, hey, why don't we play this game? I've made a lot of house rules. Here's a book. You don't need to buy anything. Or right. here's a little here's a little uh, a sheet of paper. It has five or six changes, and that's all I've got. So as long as um, whoever's running the game is up front about it and maybe isn't um, reinventing the wheel as you are going down the road, like we were going to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but even then it was with, uh, all the players had full knowledge of what was going on. So as yeah. long as everybody's on board with it from the outset, yeah, then it's, it is fine. Yeah. During the initial mud sword push, we told players, look, rules are fluid. They could literally change one session to the next because we're building a game. Right. Um, what about going to play D and D you're going to play, third edition D&D &D. and how much warning do you need um, that house rules are coming? Okay. So let's say we start playing um, and there aren't any really, but maybe you say, Hey, we're playing and you, I, uh, it's possible. I might change some things along the way or something along those lines, mm -hmm. then fine. I don't, I don't think that you can, it's, it's hard to give a set in stone kind of answer, but you it like all it. depends. It all depends. So that's the best answer right there. It depends. So with us at our table, um, I already know that rules are subject to change, right? Because no matter what we play, because if you don't like a rule, you're going to change it. Fact. So I already know this, but but you but I think it I think it would also be fair. I wouldn't be like, okay, we're gonna play third edition, and you guys show up that day, and I'm like, oh yeah, uh, wizards have to they get half as many spells normally, and they all spells take two rounds to cast. I wouldn't drop that kind of crap on you after character creation. Right. Any any change that I thought was significant, any change that I made would be pre character creation. And if it came up later, I'd say, hey, I'm thinking I'd be less inclined once the campaign started, especially if you're like, dude, I finally got disintegrate. Look at all these handfuls of dice of damage or save or die. I can do this now. I'm like, um, 
I don't really like that. So now if I did it before you before you picked it, maybe it'd be okay. You know, as long as I'm not doing it all the time and screwing every spell you want. But if I did it after you used it a few times and you're really loving it, that's eh, kind of cheap. I mean, if I do it out of the blue, now who's to say, young? Yeah? Right. So L says, Joe, can a can magic missile move a lever? House rule. One of the oldest. Yes. Um, it depends on what version of D&D you're talking about. Some of them are very specific on what you can target. Um, so I'd have to look at which version we're talking about. If it says the victim takes X damage, I would say a lever doesn't sound very much like a victim to me. If it's described as causing X amount of damage and it doesn't do much else beyond that, then probably I don't know if it would move it. It might blow it up. It all depends on the lever too. Yeah. If it's a if it's a little flimsy lever, no bigger than a light switch, you're probably going to destroy it rather than move it. And the angle of impact would matter too. So, like a lot of house rules, like a lot of situations, um, it depends. Wow. Um. Yeah, I guess I just as a DM. I, to me, when the people are already answering this question, as a DM, when did you make a house rule? To me, I'm more inclined to make it if I see gaps in the rules or if I see something that appears to be, I don't do this as much as I used to. If it seems, if something seems not just that players are exploiting something, that's fine. If they find a cool kind of combo that works good or some maneuver that works good, seems to work a lot, that's okay. The problem I might have is, and this is where I think players sometimes get, I don't know if they like this or not. If I see them doing it, and then if I turn the tables and they don't like it as much, we may need to have a discussion. Mm -hmm. right? It's great to disintegrate until the DM starts disintegrating. And then it's not as great. <laughs> you know, so um, I think that could be a one place I might would do a house rule or consider it. I'm not inclined to. I'm more likely to say, oh, this game doesn't have any rules for facing, and I use miniatures. I want facing to work, so I'm going to have a rule for facing. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that's when I would do that. I, I am inclined these days when I read a new rule book not to house rule. I want to play it straight first. Sure, Probably, sure. See how it plays. Play yeah. that a lot. Let's just play it as it is and see what happens. I've played OSE enough now to know that I've got to change. A, I will change a lot of it, but I know that old school is not really my jam as much as I enjoy bits and pieces of it. It's not really my jam. I do like, I like the feel of it, but it's a little too, I don't know. I don't know what the word is. I, I can't put it into words yet. Yeah, um, I get it. I get it. I like the old school sentiments and feelings, but necessary. I'm not married to the rules. They're fine. This is yeah. not my favorite. Yeah. And and David, and this is right. This is partially it too. I don't have to play it a lot, but David Gow says I think you should play games as is before house ruling. I do too, because you may not see the consequence. I mean, I messed around early on with third edition. I didn't like the five foot step rule because I thought it was too powerful for for wizards, and so I said, "Yeah, wizards can't make five foot steps," and it really stopped them from being, you know, hardly effective at all unless they were just way in the back. They can never get off spells. If someone, all you had to do was get next to one and you could smack the crap out of it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think here. I guess I would rather just play it, yeah. Yeah, just play straight first. Uh, how long, how much you need to play it to determine whether the rule is good or bad or you're indifferent about it. It, it all depends, I guess. Yeah. Um, Mal Malachi says this, and I think this is true for this game. For Savage Worlds, it's recommended that you play something like five sessions before you house roll. And I think that's a good rule for that game. I had to play it multiple times because I know early on we were kind of like, why is this doing this? And we finally figured out, like, I finally, it finally um, dawned Click. on me. The bennies are your hit points. If you just burn through them doing cool stuff, you're going to die when the fight breaks out. <laughs> when you have a fight, you're going to be dead. I mean, yeah, because wounds are no joke. No, no, even one no wound, joke. No joke, yo. 
yes, Martinson, I did make a big house rule. I re rewrote your character class. So at the behest of, I want to say it was Green Apple. Somebody told me to look at the Hyperborea Barbarian. Yeah. I stole yeah. that liberally. So, yeah. Um, That's the thing that um, will cause a lot of house rules is poorly implemented classes it's in a class-based game because um there's barbarian has uh gone th has had so many different forms in all of the games that we've played oh my mainly because honestly a barbarian should be more of a background than a character class anyway. probably definitely okay you hear my dog barking yeah yeah he needs to go out so okay, go ahead. I, talk I to the people it. Yeah, so I was looking at um, interpreting interpreting rules for house rule necessity, and I'll see if I can share this. Um, Joe will have the link. It's called Confounded Rules, Some AD&D Rules Examined. So give me a second, guys. I'm going to attempt to present to you guys some sweet stuff. Let's see here. Um, there we go. Share. Let me get back over here. So I'm going to scroll up. This guy, Nelson Bailey, posted on AD&D. Um, this article looks at 27 of the more problematic rules found in first edition AD&D. And I did agree with some. I feel like I saw many of these when I played, but it's been so long to, to be sure. I thought it, this was a funny one. Uh, hopefully you guys can read this. Let me make it a tad bit larger. So um, it says fifth level cleric titles. Glance at the cleric table one in player's handbook, page 20, and you will notice the fifth level cleric has no level title. There is just a blank space. What does this mean? Do fifth level clerics not have a title? Is it just the same as a fourth level cleric? Is it a typo? That's a place if titles matter to you, you might want to fill it in. Uh, he said the missing level title was actually Prefect, as noted in the Dungeon Master screen, Temple of Elemental Evil, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, I thought that was that was kind of interesting. So one of the ways to you know have a necessity for house rules, if the rules are confusing, um, here's one that bugged the crap out of me. And I remember early on, I just could not wrap my mind around this, like wh why they did it. And it felt like it made it made dragons so weak. Dragon breath damage. We talked about this a little bit. I think it was last week. Um, yeah, I agree, Malachi. Problematic is, yeah, not a great word. This topic is often, dragon breath damage has often been source of much confusion in first edition. The misunderstanding comes from an ambiguous sentence on page 30 of the Monster Manual, AD&D 1. The breath weapon damage the breath weapon causes damage equal to the dragon's hit points. Now, when the dragon gets B down, does his breath go down, right? So if he has max hit points, his breath does max damage. If he has half his hit points, his breath does half the damage. Um, he said, the issue made clear under the example of subduing, there a party of adventurers inflicted 44 hit points of damage on an 88 hit point red dragon. The first round of combat... Um, on the second round of combat, Dragon Breath inflicting 88 points of damage. For, from this example, it is plain the Dragon Breath inflicts the dragon's maximum hit points. See, I missed that. I totally missed that because for the longest time, I always played as the dragon got beat down, um, his hit points, his breath weapon damage would go down. I'm looking at that article, Joe, about, <laughs> and we were talking a bit about the, pro it says, problematic rules in AD&D and, and some of the folks was at Arm no, as Malachi says he's grown to loathe that word problematic. Problematic. It, it, the word itself is problematic. <laughs> yeah. Kill Raven says dragons were sad in one ink. Yes, they were. Fact. But it seems I was playing that wrong. Um, dragon breast? No. I may have, L. Um, sometimes I fumble over my words, so I might say dragon breast does 88 damage. Yeah. Um, Oh, look at this. Lee Adamson, he goes against this deduction from this guy. He says, the gold box computer games inflict current hit point damage when Dragon breathes, he thinks. Interesting. I used to play it that way. So as soon as you damage the dragon, his hit point was less. But this article 
seems to imply that it wouldn't be. He says there was a place under subdual where they clarified it, Joe, that hmm. the dragon's hit points is it was based on his maxed damage. So that's that's pretty interesting. But this article has just a handful of rules um, that are about that aren't fully clarified. And my point was, you know, sometimes some rules aren't clear, and then you got to kind of house rule or decide what they mean or what you want them to mean. I guess. Right. I mean, this is a this is the thing. the The game started out as a, a game that was invented in somebody's house. So you could say uh, old D&D was house rules made into a game and published because a dude played uh, over a period of time, not sure how long it was precisely, Arneson. Yeah. Then he gave his, um, from what I understand, extremely sloppy and hard to read notes to Gary yes, Gygax, cool. who mm-hmm. translated them and printed them out Um I don't even think he he um if I'm remembering correctly Arneson didn't was even drug his feet on like a final uh pass through of the rules. So in any event uh, I know yeah. that these these uh that Gary was uh had made some sort of um um miniature battles game before D&D probably a couple and but Old D&D was the first version of a role-playing game. And it kind of set the tone for how not to write rules. Because many of them were vaguely written. Yeah. But maybe people, there might be people who like that. Because I know some people like the old first edition, all of the different rules, like for grappling and everything, because they said that it gave the game character. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, if to me, they're more like warts. Yeah. Patrick said, are these actually rule problem rules problematic or are they just features of the game? The author doesn't like possibly. Yeah. I think that's fair because he does say like here in the helmet use, it's not that the rules unclear. It is weird. I did think it was funny. Anytime a helmetless character, I remember this. I never used it is attacked. A D six is rolled. If the roll is a one, the character's, is struck in the head, which is considered AC-10. Right. And then if you wore a helmet, it'd be AC-1, and a great helmet would modify that further. Yeah, I really didn't care much for that rule. It was just too much to keep track of. You know, I was really... um, Oh, this is a big one. I was really not a fan of that. Item saving throws. Oh, did I love that. (laughs) Did you see... Oh, yeah, you did. Did you see this uh, comment from Arn Man? Uh, Guy X also states there is no hit location in AD and D, and then adds the helmet rule, which is nearly <laughs> impossible to implement. Easy, ignore the rule. <laughs> right, I know. So, yeah, and I'm... there are in the early grapple, like I was saying, the one E grapple rules were stupid. A lot mm. of the psionics things were goofy. Um, in a lot of ways, having psionics made you a worse target. For psionic monsters and for non-psionic characters, made you more susceptible to be, becoming a robot or even getting killed. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of weirdness in the rules because it was early days, and even yeah. now you've got rules that are like, "What is this <laughs> trash?" Yeah, this item saving though. I just I'm going to shut this article off in a second, but I just love this. It's funny. It says fireballs, dragon breath, disintegration, falling off a cliff. How oh, great. Electrical blast of glyph of warding. When characters are struck by destructive attack forms such as these, any items on their persons must also save. They're on pages 80 and 81. He said he it's surprising how few DMs. Now, I don't know if few DMs didn't, but I used it early on. But he was right. He said, he put in quotation, um, players would rather have their characters die than to lose all their stuff. That was yep. true. God, you guys would be like, I'm useless now. Just kill him. <laughs> I lost my plus four sword. So, oh, we lost Joe completely. Where did he go? Oh, well. It's all me now, baby. Sweet. So, um, anywho. What do you think of, do you think, I know everybody's going to say, what happened, dude? Well, I was um, trying to discover what I, I've kept getting this annoying um app noise in my headphone 
and uh, I'm trying to figure out what it was, and I accidentally closed the window. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's back. Um, is there any? I think would anybody think that a game like a uh, league play, Adventurers League, RPGA, what are those called? There's a name for that kind of play. Organized play. Uh, organized play. Organized play. Should it be rules as written? Always. What I mean by that is, no, you know what I mean by that. Do you think it? Do you think there's any room for house rules in RPGA or rule or as organized play? Well, um, I say um, you can do either way. It all depends on who's running it. I mean, an RPGA type thing. If you don't have any rules whatsoever mm -hmm. and it's kind of a free-for-all then some people are going to grumble yeah. but when you make ru rules you know uh, you know the rpga rules people will grumble yeah so uh take your pick i don't know that i don't know that one way is superior to the other yeah and i'm not sure you know um i, I think most people would agree with legion here and Malachi says as closely, oops, as closely as possible. Legion says if it's official, RPGA, Adventure League, Pathfinder Society, yes, should be raw, no matter how dumb raw. It, ne it never has been. They've always had a ton of uh, addendums. Yeah, even Pathfinder Society. I mean, I was there year zero with PFS. I ran year zero, year one, and year two at Gen Con. And I'm telling you, they didn't have the rules as written. There was some restrictions, things you couldn't do, feats you couldn't pick. Um, right. And they made special uh, spell restrictions and how you got spells. Um, but I think that was more to make the place like a fair play thing. Because the truth is, in Pathfinder Society, they knew the wizards were king. Um, so. I just, I've not, I've had some positive experiences with organized play, but that has more to do with the folks than the rules. I'll tell you that some of the, the modules, especially in the, um, I can't remember if it was Pathfinder or third edition uh, organized play. I think it was third, three, five. I think it was your play. They, they were horribly written. Yeah. Horribly written. I know in Pathfinder Society, I thought they were lame. I mean, the adventures were neat. I mean, Paizo's always been good at the story element, the uh, setup of the adventure. Uh, but they would make the encounters just stupid easy because you would consistently have six or more player characters and they would make encounters that I know three or four of our player characters would, would win, you know, maybe not handily, but they would win. And so sometimes the DM, not that I have to win, but I mean, it would just be boring. I'm like the players in, in any group that was a team that was, I got, I think I told you there was these guys from Michigan somewhere that came in and they were like attack pattern Delta. I mean, they, they were organized, right? They murdered everything. Um, so that was pretty cool. So, yes, Legion, I agree. Um, now, now to, to be fair, he said none that he's ever played in or was he ever challenged. I think that's true. I have heard that some of their high level games got pretty tough, but I never played beyond third or fourth level. Um, I didn't really like playing, I ran. I ran adventures up to like fourth or fifth level um, multiple times. I never ran a really high level table um, and got out after year three or two. I think after year two, I, I got out. So the only time you really, I think in those old modules, there are issues is when you don't go along with the program. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's this, there was a situation in one of the, the um, organized play modules where you get, kind of cornered in a cave system but it's not that bad because the guys attacking you are coming from the outside so you can funnel them through the opening and that's all well and good until one of the players gets scared and decide there's no way to win <laughs> yep. and decides to attack another player character and then to knock them out and then surrender the party <laughs> so if you do dumb things like that, mm -hmm. become a coward. Then, uh, then the in those um, modules, 
they have a real, or they did this particular one and this particular line of yeah. modules were really narrow mm -hmm. and very railroady. So if you did too much outside of the scope of what you're supposed to do, the DM didn't have much leeway. Yeah. They, you know, the DM, when this happened, he still, he tried. Right. To, to, to not, to, um, you try to get out of yeah. but, uh, yeah, you, you kind of, you almost got to keep people on the rails. You can only give them so much freedom. Another thing I found that I, I just found this weirdly, it would take me completely out of, out of the, out of playing it was, your, it was like, yeah, look, we are playing a game. I mean, this is just a, a modified board game is you would like, there would be in, in the adventure, there would be a plus one sword of troll slaying, right? And get extra D6 damage versus trolls or whatever, be on fire. And at the end of the adventure, no one could pick it up and use it. Or someone could pick it up and use it during the play. So one character could grab it and use it during the adventure. But at the end, they couldn't keep it unless they had enough gold to purchase it. So it would be for sale at 6,000 gold at the end of the adventure, and they could purchase it, that adventure. Now, I don't know if they could buy it later, but in theory, all six people at the table could purchase that sword. Yeah. So, every, so everyone would have would have my guard, the plus one sword of troll slaying on their character. And I was like, that's kind of weird, especially in a shared campaign. But Except I mean, the kind of part. Yeah, it's totally weird. Um, um, the attempts at organized play have all all been not good, in my opinion. I don't know too much about current organized play. Yeah, I don't either. Adventurer League, I, I have no idea. I have no idea, so maybe it's done, handled a little better. But um, in the past, I've, it's very underwhelming. People in the military liked it because it was easier to get a game going, so it had that going for it. So you still got to, even though the module's kind of blue, um, mm -hmm. you were able to get together, play, have some food, make new friends. So it was good for that. Yeah, if if you played outside of the outside of Gen Con and the big conventions, you had because there was kind of like a there was a home group that you could you could play in a home group style with your RPGA, just get the adventures and some guy could run you guys through them. So it could feel like a like a normal campaign. Well, I, except see that's that's an issue. Okay, we're getting a little bit outside of the scope, mm -hmm. but The culture of play in Pathfinder society is getting through modules. It's not really campaigning. There's a bunch of modules that are the official modules. We got to get through them all. It's not, it's not, uh, to me, it's not the ideal way to play, but it's still playing. It still can be fun. It's just not like, ideal. I think I like Gygax's rule here. Iron Man says Gygax had the right idea about RPG tournaments at conventions. Just kill all the characters. Yeah, you bring convention characters. You don't just bring your regular characters. Dude, look at Cal. Little hoarder. I still have my RPGA Society card and pin from 1980. Wow. Dude. Nice. How about this? Um, do house rules make the game better? I know that's it all that depends, happens. dude. It all depends. They can. Is it just the GM's decision? Rules wise, yeah, duh. I think so. I mean, I'm fine with. I mean, I I, I do ask for player input. Yeah, there's inputs cool, but it, at the at the end of the day, rules decisions are the DM's decisions. Yeah. Oh, David Gal brought something up. Any thoughts on doing organized play better for our own convention, if nothing else? That's. That's an idea. I don't see organized play being a part of our first uh, big geek con, but I had that had not even crossed my mind. Let's see how it goes. So, yeah, maybe. So, uh, L has something here. Oh. Now, he might be talking about early convention play. So, maybe you weren't aware of it. Randy, you have to consider you were given characters at conventions. So pregens, yeah. So who cares if they, who care who really cares if they live or die? And if they kill them, if you if they let you take them home, you could say that they killed them, but you could also just bring it home and say, "Can I play this dude?" 
Pretty right. cool. <laughs> but most of the time, I imagine those characters were not the uh, best constructed. <laughs> Sometimes they were uber constructed, depending oh, on... Yeah? I played in games where the characters were made really pimped out. Like oh. I played in, I played in a sav. It wasn't a Savage Worlds game. I saw somebody at Gen Con who was running Savage Worlds, and I was talking to him, and he showed me his characters, and he had pimped the crap out of those characters. He'd give them all sorts of extra edges. He goes, "I want them to be super tough." I'm like, "Okay." Oh, oh yeah, okay. Can players even make house rules? No. Okay. How can they do that? They can uh, suggest. I can't just say, okay, Randy, I know it's your game, but this is how we're going to do this now. Dude, there, I, I have heard online and in YouTube videos of people saying, well, the DM didn't like this rule, but we did, so we all voted and it became the rule. <laughs> I'm just like, Dude, you know how that'd work at my table. I'm like, oh, you guys all voted? How nice. Here's a vote. Rocks fall. You're dead. Get out of my house. You know. People take this democracy thing a little too seriously. Yeah, they do. In every part of your life, not in my game. No. <laughs> That's dumb. Yeah. That's I, really dumb. It is okay. really dumb. We so know. they must have had some sort of um, thing where they that was a thing at their table. It's, a, it's you, down to a vote. It's down to a vote. I'm telling you, if that, I understand a player's like, I don't like your game, but we want to do it this way. Okay, someone else is running. Or if they're being really, I mean, they're not going to make me run a game I don't want to run. I don't even understand that. Indeed, <laughs> Mr. Max, democracy is a sham. Yeah, it's the it's the most of the people telling the 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 it's the fifty plus one percent telling everybody else what to do, essentially. Oh, DDM, I should know that. Kill Raven, is that the Dungeons and Dragons miniatures? Is that the one you're talking about? The only organized play thing I ever actually enjoyed was the DDM tournaments. I think we used to play some of that around here. Yeah. That I was, um, just do that, I think. That's just miniature battles, right? Yeah, I believe. Yeah, yeah. He said, yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah, those were pretty cool. That was until they did the second edition and ruined it all, but that was pretty sweet. I think that's your fourth edition and death conversion. Yeah, they screwed it up. So L says all parties should be sympathetic anarchies. <laughs> so, yes, we do our own thing. Screw you. Screw you, hippies. Um, oh, look at what Arn Man said. It's up to the person owning the house, even if that is not the DM. Uh, talk no. about the house rules? No. no. Oh, if it's house rule as in their house, their rules, but not at the table. Dude, if I'm at Joe's house, if I'm running the game, it's my rules. But I understand yeah. he has rules in his home. Sure, sure, sure. Game. Two different things. I mean, Joe, I guess Joe can say, no, you can't run criticals like that at my home. And I'm like, all right, see you, dude. Have fun playing. He'll send me to my room. <laughs> Go, God, I won't do that. You know, I respect Joe's house, but I'll be like, dude, <laughs> like, just because I'm at your house and because you fed me dinner don't mean, I mean, I'm still killing your wizard. Just be prepared. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I, this is a weird question, but it's, are there any games that you played that you would say, I like them exactly the way they are? I would not house, house rule this game. Say that again? Are there any RPGs? And this is hard to say, I know. Are there any RPGs that you would say, I like it exactly the way it is. I've yet had a desire to house rule anything in this game. Well, there's a bunch of games like that that I've played a few times that I like that I have no idea if house ruling would be effective or... Any that you... Like for me, I think it's mostly Savage Worlds. Have I ever house ruled Savage Worlds? Help me out. I don't think I have. We played this several times. You've several. talked about um, different things, but I don't think you've ever done it. Okay, so that would be in theory, Joe. In fact, in democracy, it is a very small minority telling the people that 50 plus 1% of the people want to do a thing in a specific way that somehow always suits. Right, so somehow the elite always... Um, gets that um, 50 plus 1% to go along with them in some kind of way, or at least make it look that way. Right. Yeah. Well, this is something that's come along. Uh, Legion said this, to Watsi, the DM is just, and I wouldn't say just Watsi to some people, the DM is just another player with no more authority than the other players, just a different role whose job is to provide fun. Yeah, that's not true. They can think that, but wrong, wrong. <laughs> I mean, as friends, when we're at the table, 
we like each other to have fun. So Absolutely. sometimes we do entertain each other with jokes yeah. or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's not our job. No, I think my job. I hope my players enjoy what I provide. So I do want them to be entertained by what I do. But I also get to have fun. And part of that fun is running the game that I want to run the way I want to run it. But I don't go in there thinking, oh, I'm going to, you know, tell everybody what to do. I mean, we're all friends and, you know, that's fine. What's Cal going to do? Next game, I'm handing out IOUs for fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the point of games is entertainment, mm -hmm. fun to to whatever that means for you. Mm -hmm. um, it could be fun, like being uh, playing chess. It could be fun, like uh, watching funny movies or whatever. Fun. There's different kinds of fun, but it's no put. And it's no one person's job to provide fun. The D, it's the DM's job to relay the game world and arbitrate the rules. That's it. Fun happens by what the players do and how they interact with whatever the DM's got up his sleeves. So, Some, if the DM and many DMs, I've heard many online say, I take it upon myself to blah, 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 whatever else comes out of their mouth, and that's fine. That's up mm -hmm. to them. <laughs> okay. You saw that too, huh? Yeah, that's pretty sweet, Mr. Max. <laughs> Max says, it's like sex. Everyone is responsible for their own fun. <laughs> oh. I like everyone to have fun. So mm -hmm. I will cut up sometimes, tell a joke, or act a certain way yep. to get a reaction that I hope people will enjoy. But I don't look at it as a job. You no. Know, I look at it as an obligation, let's yeah. say. Yeah, I, I, I'm not like wringing my hands, man. I hope Joe has fun tonight, man. I hope Josh has fun tonight, man. Was Josh, was Jeff bored? Now, to be honest with you, in the past, I've always wondered, did folks enjoy this session? I want them to have fun, but that's just me. Am I providing the challenges they want to do? And are they having fun trying to overcome them? Not, am I, yeah, they're not customers, they're and, not paying me to do. And like that. I was saying earlier, fun is different, it's not like. I'm giggly and clapping my hands and acting like a little <laughs> child. That yes, kind of fun. Do. That's how you do. That's, That's how, how I do. Joe plays. Yeah, yeah. He's giggling all the time. It's, like, quit clapping. I mean, we do tend to joke around a lot. Or we can. It can come in spurts. Uh, mm -hmm. But we, uh, for me, the fun is more akin to satisfaction at solving puzzles rather than giddiness. Lee Adamson, which I don't know if I've seen that name before, but I'm glad you're here. For some DMs, I think tweaking the rules is fun in and of itself. I think that's true, regardless of whether something is broken or not. We are spurgs that revel in the minutia. I don't know what a spurg is, but... We spurg out. Okay. We were doing that earlier when we were, when we were, getting, when we were getting pedantic. Oh, oh, okay. Related related terminology. Yeah. Oh, Patrick's got it. Joe, it's one of Joe's favorite sayings, some version. You really should be playing with players and a DM you trust. Playing with friends 99% of the time results in fun anyways. Truth. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you were, so, so you don't have a, the last question is kind of weird, but I kind of want to reform it. At least the last question in the list. Given your druthers, would you rather sit at a table where people use house rules conformed? I mean, they take house rules and use them. Or would you rather try, oh, Spurgers, Asperger's, says uh, Patrick. Or would you rather sit at a table where it's pretty much rules as written? It depends. <laughs> Gosh, I knew you were going to say that. Well, because it's it's too subjective. Like, um, I don't care if you change a rule. Right per se. It mm -hmm. all depends on how you change it. We'll have a talk. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll uh, lay the law down. Right. I'll change the rule because Joe will tell me to. Everybody will. Joe will be the spokesman. Everyone voted, Randy, and you can't run it that way. Can Wizards you. get double the spells per level. But it all depends on the, the table. If And it depends on the situation. So if, I, if I'm invited to a table for like a one-off, I'm not going to care what the house rules are. No. No. 
um, if yeah, one off no. If I've been asked to participate in a campaign and I'm a player and I've never played with these folks before, I will play for a while and, and figure out if I like it or not. It all depends on the rules that are changed. And just because a rule is good doesn't mean it could it it's immune from being changed at the table. Just it, if you if you just if your taste dictates otherwise, you can just change rule because just because I like this better or. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean it works better. It just means you like it better. Well, you know what? I like initiative with cards, and I'm just going to use it in all my games. Right. I mean, I mean, I wouldn't do that, but you could say that's what I do. I use card initiative. I'll do it. That's how I use D20 initiative. That's how I'm going to do it. Right. Um, Lee again says a uh, good thing, uh, interesting thing. I don't care what rules the DM uses as long as he's a good DM. I think that's true. You get a good DM, you kind of, the rules are kind of, I mean, you can get frustrated sometimes, but a good DM is not out to hose you. So he's probably not out to make rules that are completely unfair. And he's out to provide, you know, a uh, good adventure. Hopefully you'll have fun and kick butt. Uh, Legion, you will not. You will not set my cards on fire. We're using them Friday night. I'm going to offer that to our DM. You're a digital. <laughs> Card, what, what are you doing? <laughs> don't like those cards on fire. I don't know what L is saying. But can I put it up here? Because I want to have him clarify Says Randy, will we reach the ship of Theseus for house rules? I don't know what that means. He's probably he's going whoosh. It's past my over my head. It's it's a myth mythological reference. Okay, ship of Theseus. I'm not sure. You know, I could always with my great Google foo. Ship of Theseus is a thought experiment about whether an object that has had all of its original components replaced remains the same. Oh, oh. well, we, oh. we we mentioned that earlier. Okay. We, that's you mentioned good. that earlier. Uh, someone said if if they've if all the rules if if you make the book obsolete with your house rules, are you still playing that game? But yeah. who cares? I mean, if you're if you're Whoa. having fun, I'm getting blasted with the cards. Dang, Lee saying no. Thurston Howell the fourth cards of Magic the Gathering. Oh, <laughs> man, yeah, Patrick summed it up for me. Thank you, sir. Ship of Theseus, so many changes, it becomes a totally new game. Yeah, I think that can happen with house rules. You have to be careful, especially if you have your pet rules, right? What's Iron Man saying? We are planning a caveman game where the players can only speak the words they know. Not the players, no, but the characters. Oh, boy. Uh, you get your int score as your word total, and they are, and they are randomly determined. Anything else is hand signals and grunts. <laughs> Joe would hate that. I would love it. For a one shot. Fun is a one off. Yeah. Yeah. Malachi I represent, dude. I've got Randy Nichols back. I like cards for initiative. In I, I just Savage, like Savage World. I do too. I don't really want them in DD. Yes, you do. Martin said, I disagree. He says, you can use cards, just a lot of people won't want to play. They'll play, and they'll like it. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Not a fan of uh, throwing cards into D&D. &D. Yeah. If, the, if it's a, a totally separate game, so I know Patrick is, is making a game that's a card-based, that's one thing. If the, the whole game is based around a card or a card system, that's fine. But D and D, or just a game that it is not necessarily part of it to begin with, like um, Palladium games. Like if you threw, well, if you use Savage Rifts, you would be using cards. That's right. Well, I'm about to run a. So I'm excited about Friday because I'm going to be running. We're going to be switching after this week. We're going to we're going to Rifts. And yes, I will be playing by the official Rifts rules unless I find that I'm annoyed and I want to go back, go to Savage Worlds. But currently I'm going to be doing that. So, yeah. Uh, good night, Legion. Take care, bud. Yeah, do it. Subscribe, like, share, comment. Mostly subscribe, though. Yes. Hit that bell notification, too, so you can be notified. Mar Hawkman, shuffle the deck of monster cards, deal a monster for a random encounter. Nothing wrong with that, especially if they're all dragons.
Got to stack that deck. You know, there are some things that um, I, I guess I would have to agree with that because um, I do, I haven't um, fleshed it out yet in the real world, but in my head are decks of encounter cards and monsters and, and all the different things. And I was like, well, how am I going? Am I, am I going to put this on a random table or am I just going to draw them out of a deck? Yeah. It's just as easy to draw them out of a deck. Yeah. But I can see some people rolling dice is a fun thing. Sure. Um, and it's a different, it's different from just pulling a card out of a deck for Stop some people. Oh. Boom. Random. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you could use those sound effects when you're rolling dice <laughs> to simulate. <laughs> no, don't do that. Come on. Don't do that. No, that look bad. <laughs> that, that's, that seems a little that seems a little risque. Especially on you on the on the interwebs. <laughs> <laughs> um all right. Oh, this looks good. CBK ply. So I'm getting ready to go into a riffs rant. Too bad Mr. Legion left. I just started a Rifts Chaos Earth campaign that this past weekend. Yeah. Chaos Earth. I just read about that on their website. It's pre. It's just at the when the rifts first happen. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. I'm thinking of probably asking for a bunch of those books in one of their Christmas packages if I if I do that. Um. So in the second segment here, I, I got a little bit of a rant. So I made my character. Hold on. Oh, sorry. You are so freaking fast. God, so that's how I be. Oh, you oh. didn't make a title. I thought I was going to read the title of the segment, mm. you know, provide a little bit of, you know, uh, transition. Do it. Transition us. Um, you are now a woman. <laughs> Damn it. That is not what I wanted to happen. <laughs> that was not on my schedule today. <laughs> so, yes, mm. Randy, for this next bit, will have a bit of a rant about riffs, not the game itself. No, oh, the really. character creation part of the creation. So I spent you're not talking about a tool online to create your character, you're talking no, about character creation. <laughs> look at that. Lee's got my back. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'm grabbing the riffs book. Um, and I got this version. This is not the ultimate edition, which I need to get. Um, this, um, okay, everybody knows Riffs is loaded with like super, um, super cool art. Uh, Randy, Randy, art especially. you should look at the screen. You have a fan. Randy still looks, thank you, Al. That's true, though. He, Al only speaks the truth about me. So, <laughs> except when he's doing math, then I have to question him. <laughs> but the art is fabulous. And so I make this character called a crazy. And so, Rand, so at the beginning, you roll 3d6 for these eight stats, you know, and they're kind of weirdly named, but they're cool. I mean, I, I don't mind. And then you modify all that with these skills. Um, this is a beautiful book, by the way. Um, and um, so you're like, you got to get your skills. So I got to pick my skills for the crazy. And then based on my stats, my character's kind of on the dumb side, and by kinda, I mean he has a six mental affinity. Not mental affinity. Which one is it? Mental. Oh gosh, which one is those stats? I have um, mental endurance. Mental. One of my mental stats is like a six, and so <laughs> Cal put me in a dress. I don't think so, dude. Anyway, so you roll your stats three d six. They are what they are. IQ. Thank you, Patrick. That's it. IQ is what I've got. So I'm like a total moron. And that's just fine. I don't mind playing dumb. I mean, I'm kind of kind of naturally. There's good. no penalties. Not really. But it, but I mean, you are dumb. I mean, six is dumb. Yeah, so, but there's um, no penalties. So oh, it's so weird, but so I'm supposed I can pick like mathematics and physics for my dude. And so I could pick it, but I'm like, I'm doing that. I'm playing it. I'm going, I'm gonna go the old um uh, um uh, I have not yet. There is one for RPG. What is DG? Digest. I need to watch that one then before Friday. I will look that one up. Thank you, Elle. And by Great. that one, Randy means for those who are listening and not watching, mm -hmm. um, L asked if he watched RP Digest's 
RPG Digest video yes. covering the crazy. Yeah. And so I'm making this character roll my main stats. Got to get skills. Skills modify the stats. But um, there aren't any really that modify your intelligence, are there? Not really. But that's not the point. So I get this, and slowly I realize, oh, look, my hit points are increasing. I have more SDC. I end up getting cool equipment. But this is taking forever because you're flipping pages. Go to this page and see what martial arts you can choose from. This martial arts allows you to do this, this, and this. Go to this page to see what the actual modifiers are. Um, oh, really? That must be a new thing. For every stat below eight, you can add a D6 roll to any stat of your choice. Oh, well, I did not. Other than the six. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I did do that. Okay, that's right. So I have one stats of 30. I'm like, I'm like crazy strong, dude. I will throw a car through a window. Not exactly, but I'm strong. Um, anyway, plus 15 damage. Watch out. So anyway, but all the, all the page flipping. And I spent two hours and did not have my character done. <laughs> that's annoying. Well, but, that is the first time you made a character in Rifts in a long, long time. Righto. And it, I tell you what, it's a little convoluted with the page flipping, but that's an organizational issue. Yeah. I think the idea of rolling old school stats, the fact that you get to modify a lot of them a lot makes it no worries about what you roll. Yeah. Just roll your character. Whatever you get's fine. I mean, at one point, I think I rolled like four extra D6 for a stat. That's my strength. So that's pretty cool. One of the drawbacks to Rifts is I do think there are some skills that are just inarguably so much better for your character. And boxing. Like, yeah, like boxing. And if you pick boxing or wrestling, which I picked them all because I'm an evil man maxer. No, because that's my job. But if you're a wizard, you pick a couple of those, you can become pretty decent in all your all your stats. Um, let me grab my character real quick here. I've got a copy of my dude. And I've got a, a 30 physical strength, but only a 15 physical prowess. So I am super strong. I do plus 15 damage as a level one character, right? If I hit you with a hammer, it's a D6 plus 15. But my bonus to hit's only plus one. And that's because I got hammer as a weapon. I don't actually get any bonus to hit from my strength. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying it's interesting. This Your game is, is gonna... hammer. Well, that's one of my mundane weapons. I do have. Don't worry. I have some high tech, you know, mega yeah. damage stuff, okay. not mega damage armor. I'm not walking into this with like a complete douche nozzle. He's close. <laughs> but I do have 145 SDC. I'm decent. Um. This is what I'm hoping for. CBK Plus says, and I've heard Max at Legion say this, when you make a Rifts character, everything is on your sheet at the end and should not have to refer to the book during the game. I'm not sure if that's going to be true because some of the spells and stuff, the descriptions, I don't know the spells as well. So I think a fairly skilled player would have to do that. Well, I think You're crazy, to... though. You're not casting spells, are you? I'm a minor psionic, sir. Well, you, then that's not a spell, you weirdo. I'm psionicizing but anyway, um, you really rolled minor psionic. I did. Dude. <laughs> so anyway, so you're um, a dumb psionic. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, and I picked a lot of passive powers. A lot. I picked three passive. Hey, hey, powers. hey! Star Wars movie, not yep. Star Wars. Superman movie, '70s yep. Superman movie. Mm -hmm. What's the name of the uh, guy Jaws played? Hmm. Superman 2. Yep. Jaws, the guy who, who's Jaws with the metal teeth. He didn't play one of the one of the one of the Yeah. Did he? Oh no, that's a different guy. No, Sorry. different guy. No, no. Okay, the big dumb, the big dumb uh dude. Yeah. You had superpowers. Yes. Yeah. That's you. Kind of like that. I can shoot lasers <laughs> out of my eyes. It took um, you, it took him a while. He had to really focus hard to get his eye beams going. <laughs> CBK says, write down the bold words on back of the sheet for your psionics. I have a page reference. I'm going to have it right on it when I'm playing. Uh, my powers are right next to each other. I, well, you can't I, have that many, though. Three. Yeah. But I have a uh, 30-something power points. That's not bad. Well, mine are very passive. I'm not, like, blowing stuff up. None. Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. But this guy's kind of cool. Uh, 
But I guess for me, it reminds me of Pathfinder 3.x that you have to spend some time, quality time, making a character um, to, if, if you're concerned about, especially if you're new at it. And then when you get to the table, you got all the bonuses on your character sheet, like someone said, and I think it was CBK, and it plays pretty well. So I'm hoping that's the case. From what I can gather, it's uh, attack rolls or D20, and um, skills are percent under your percentages. So the rules don't sound complicated. And um, I'm going to GM this mess. So I, I want to get a taste of it as a player. And then I'm just going to run the rules kind of – I think Joe's going to play my Rifts game. I told him I'm going to try to follow the rules, but most of the time I'm probably just going to wing it. If I don't know it at the table, I'm just going to wing it, and then I'll figure it out later. Um, but I, I have enjoyed it. I do find it um, – surprisingly close to a 3.x in um, how detailed the character sheet is. I would say it's more detailed than a 3.x character sheet, but um, I'm hoping what everybody's saying is right. I hope it plays well. Uh, you do get 45 million saving throw categories, though. I have curses, disease, lethal poison, non-lethal poison, drugs, insanity, pain, coma, death, psionics. <laughs> That's him. That's not Jaws, is it? No. no. Mark McClure? Okay. No, no, no. That's not Mark McClure. Is that Jack, Jack O'Halloran. I said Mark. I looked at Mark McClure. I don't know. Maybe I was. Randy equals not. Who is Non they're talking about? Non is the name of the character in Superman 2. That yeah, pretty about. much. Pretty much. But I'm going to be much cooler. Um. No, no. No one would make him my gas. I am mine. He's kind of weird. So I've got a little, I've got a little uh, affectation I'm going to try to work with. I'm going to try to role play this dude. We'll see how it goes. I'm excited. Huh. Sounds like it's going to be fun. Yeah. So the rant is all the flipping. In the end, it took me about three hours, three and a half hours to get the character done. Um, I'm sure it'll be worth it. I'm sure it's going to be a total blast. Um, I don't know the DM guy, but he's been pretty nice on dis Discord, and I'm sure with Max and the other dudes, they'll carry the load. I'll just stay back and shoot stuff or go crazy. Well, that's your job is to be yeah, crazy. That's my job. Crazy dude. Do lots of damage. Damage. I mean, well, in melee and range, I, I mean, I, I got, I don't, I literally don't have a modifier to hit. My bonus to strike is zero. At range. Period. Now well, you just I, said you have plus one to hit. No, that's if I use a hammer, smack people with it. If I shoot a laser and I, I aim, I get plus three. And then if I shoot wildly, I get minus one. I don't know what it is. But again, again, you know, if you're shooting at something, you need a five or higher, I believe. And if you're meleeing something, you need an eight or higher. So hitting's not the problem. I got to make sure I do some damage. Well, yeah. Um, I'm not sure why you would do that. Do what? Shoot. I mean, if you, if, if, as strong as I am. You but, just but walk I, up with things and bonk them. I need a, but if it's a mega damage creature, I can't hit them with a normal hammer. That won't hurt them. Oh, but there's there's mega damage uh, there melee is. weapons. There is, but I didn't have access to many of them. Oh. Not that, no handheld ones that I saw. Maybe I didn't read it deeply enough. There should be something like um, um, something like a laser sword or something. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. There, I'm sure there is. I mean, don't forget, Rift has 900 splat books, so there's probably some sweet crap somewhere. So, but yeah, I mean, the flippity floppity stuff drove me crazy. I think though, the Ultimate Edition is better, um, especially when they had the skills laid out. Our buddy Jeff had that. In fact, I liked it so much. I'm probably going to purchase it on eBay. I may ask Debbie to get it for Christmas. See if she'll give me because I don't want to buy nothing now. It's so close to Christmas. I want to. See what, what what Santa brings me, so. But so anyway, so it's just a bit of a rant. It's more of a more of an excitement rant. I'm kind of pumped to try and play this. So, and um, you, that I, I think mo most people, if they have a gripe, character creation is the biggest gripe because it's related to the organization part of the game. They're not the the books were not organized well, and he was a initially a one man. Yes. Force, and then he hired a couple of people to help him out, but he wrote most of the text for almost all of the books. So, um, Kevin yeah. Sambita. He apparently wrote 12 books in one year one time. Um, 
Darth says your strength does not add to mega damage weapons unless you do mega damage naturally. Oh, poop. So I'd have to, I'd have to like have a mega damage Iron Man outfit or be well, a mega Maybe weapon. you're crazy. So you might want to look it up and see if your, your strength qualifies as there's a couple of categories. There's um, extraordinary and there's yeah. one other one. I don't know what it's called, but yeah, you'd have to check it out. Yeah. Um, so I would look it up in the rules and see whether you do do it naturally or not. I don't have any idea. I, it's been a long time since I read the text on the crazy. Yeah, I, we'll see how it goes. I'm I'm going to have to think like in our game when we run because I've got like eight or nine people. I imagine they should be able to do make a damage. Uh, when when I hear um, um, Legion of Myth, when I listen to them on podcast. They talk about how powerful it is. And if they can't do mega damage except with uh, guns, it seems crazy. Uh, it seems weird that you would play one. You yeah, could play well, a bounty hunter. They probably have better. Well, I can do mega damage with my... with my. Phil Raven says that minimum physical prowess for a crazy is 17. I'm trying to find where that's written at. Um, I didn't see that in the book. You're probably right. Yeah, so, but then it's like you're saying, the organization is an issue and it's your first time playing. So it's easy to miss stuff. I see. It says uh, minimum physical strength is 19. Um, I don't, oh, minimum PP, I see it, is 17. Okay, so I have a 17. That's about to be adjusted. I don't get to roll that extra D6, do I, because of that? Because <laughs> if, well, if you roll a, 16, 17, or 18 on your three. Oh, seasons. yeah, naturally, yeah. You get a natural. All right, so the, so my my PP? PP. Your PP has gotten bigger. My PP is bigger. <laughs> that might help me with attacking now. So that's a big, that's actually a big boost. So thank you. Was it Kill Raven that said that? Thank yeah. you. Oh, yeah, baby. Plus one to parry, dodge, and strike. Oh, dude, I believe, what does it say? Um, Which one? What does it say? Have to roll, Randy? I don't know what that means. Has have to go. Roll. roll. He has to roll. I roll. roll an extra D6? No. What are you talking about? My 17 physical prowess. No. That's not natural. That's you had to adjust it to get to oh, that. Okay. That was not a natural roll. Shush. I like naturalness. Okay. Sounds good. So now now I'm literally unstoppable. Thanks. <laughs> now I'm so done. You also need to look up and see. You also need to look up and see if you as a crazy have just regular strength or if it's supernatural or if it's qualifies oh. for mega damage. You need to oh. you need to make sure of that. I do. Crap, man. It sounds, it sounds to me, if you don't have the it, getting all these bonuses to strength and being a crazy, mm -hmm. unless, unless um, somewhere down the line after you level, your strength becomes supernatural, that would make sense. Yeah. But um, you guys having fun tonight helping Randy fix his stupid character? Right. It seems underwhelming for you to have a sub supernatural. I have super endurance. Increase strength, increase speed. Um, and that's all it says. It doesn't say unless it's. Is it going to be written in all the text part as far as the description of the hero? Uh, it who is, knows? Because if it is, it makes me angrier. So that's right. ridiculous. That's dumb. Um, okay, going with the seventeen. Um, yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. If not You're lucky, it's not D and D. You would have you'd be screwed. You wouldn't be able to be a crazy. <laughs> Patrick's making a joke. If your PP is bigger, doesn't that increase your PB? That's physical beauty. Yeah, my physical beauty is seventeen too, though. I'm a looker. Really? Your your character has a seventeen. Yeah. <laughs> what a waste, dude. Darth, he's warning me. I thought I was unstoppable when I played a dragon hatchling. Was wiped out in the first game. Don't get cocky. That might be something I play one time because they're easy to make up. All their craps on one page. 
<laughs> they're pretty simple but yeah but we'll see yeah i'm i'm pretty thirsty oh did you do that or not do that i did okay he could be crazy it's called a bard yeah so all right so i'll have to do a little more deep dive in the next few days i gotta be ready i don't want to disappoint the dudes so i'll make sure my guy is ready to rock and roll you should find some you should find some way to make your physical damage mega damage i will look at least, can... uh, at least find some kind of uh, mega damage melee weapon because being strong i mean you can go around and punch out a bunch of normal dudes but there's no fun in that so so their their stats what's weird is do you get modifiers but a 30 strength is not considered as high end of a normal dude though I'm guessing 30 is the highest you can get as a normal dude. I'm pretty sure. Right. And, but I don't, if I'm not technically a mega damage creature, then I can't do that. Well, you need to figure out some way to get into mega damage. Lady says your damage should be mega damage. And it's the same table as the boards. I know what he's talking about. I think Lady's talking about the experience point table. And they do now to risk credits. They do have, um, they do have um, experience. Thirst, Thirsty says, get your crunch together, Randy. <laughs> Dude. Dude, I, I feel that I'm being pressed today. No, I'm under a cyber night juicer and crazies. That's the table that I'm on. So, you guys are making me feel bad now. I thought I was ready. Dang, gum it. All right. Your strength, <laughs> not your damage. What? Flady says, no, your strength. Oh. What? I will read it closer. But exceptional does it. Okay, so, but exceptional. P5, page 55. Okay. I mean, these guys have played riffs. I've not really played much. Let me see here. I've read through the book a couple times when I was like 20 something. 56 is the page. He said 55. I know, but 56 is where the crazy is. If it's on 55, then something's weird because that's a coalition uh, officer. Um, I don't know. I'll look it up. I'll figure it out. I don't want to waste the rest of the pot on this. Thank you guys. I appreciate all the help. Okay. Well, moving along, uh, remember out there if you're listening or watching to give us a thumbs up like and subscribe share with your friends yeah we are getting ready to have a not that we haven't been doing it the whole night so, or the whole time so far he's in the ultimate book that's why it's the different page number okay is that Fair enough. It? yeah this anyway is the, uh, whatever this is right so we're going to we want to engage the chat mm -hmm. with speculation <laughs> as to the OGL SRD or whatever it's going to be called under 1D&D. &D. I didn't think they were going to have one. So, I mean, 1D&D... &D, um, I guess they are going to have some way for you to make stuff, but I don't, I don't, I don't know that they're going to have an OGL. I thought they weren't. That was the rumor um, that they won't have one. I don't know that if they do, it's going to be really limited. Um, I thought they tried this bullcrap before with fourth edition. It's kind of like it's there was like rumblings that. about it. Yeah, it's kind of like, um, and there was a, and they were rumbling about it, and people were like really upset about it. Um, I think Mr. I think they're going to try it because I think I think Mr. Maxwell says I think they'll try to restrict the OGL a lot and I do too because I think they're going to try Professor Dungeon Master has done a pretty good job I know you don't like him he's done a pretty good job with his predictions of what Watsy is going to do I think he, they're going to be very few books and I think he's going to I think they're going to tr they're trying to really corner the market I think. Um, Um, David Goff says he doesn't see how they'll get away with it because they'll want to farm ideas and content from the fan base. Right. Yeah, I think the idea is that they're still going to have a way to do that. 
mm-hmm. but they're going to severely limit what you can do with that content. I can't remember the specifics. It's been a while since I heard this the little speculation because it, it, right now it's just um, some dude talking. You know, mm-hmm. someone who says sources or people who are familiar with the matter type type language. Yeah. Right. I'm fully, they're going to call it sixth edition because. Really? The, yeah, because the last time I was, I read a blurb from them, they said um, one D&D is the code word, just like D&D Next was the code word. Oh, right? really? So of course, it's going to be sixth edition. They don't have any creativity over there. They're not going to call it anything. One D&D to rule them all, dude. The buck stops here. This is the game. All of us will join. Join the collective or die. Right. That's the rule, right? <coughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. Um, if they don't have an OGL, uh, Thurston Howell IV says, how is 1 D&D not inclusive then? That's a problem. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what they do. I, I'm, I'm with Kill Raven. I think they're going to try to lock that third party stuff down. Um, well, I don't think that they're going to be able to stop people from making third party content for for things before one D and D comes out. You'll you'll still be able to use OGL for that stuff. It's just going forward. I mean, uh, what kind of rules are they going to come up with that are going to be worth worrying about anyway? Oh yeah, they're just going to screw things. So, um, I, I responded in in text. Uh, I said, uh, "Going to keep it secret till Friday night," and there was a clue in that statement. <laughs> so, oh, <laughs> so sounds like you're paranoid. <laughs> Something. So yeah, I'm gonna keep it secret, CBK. Uh, but I did roll it up, just completely random. Which now I do love that about character creation. So last note, love all the random rolling. It was very cool. I enjoy that. A lot of the times, though, it says p- roll or pick. So, yeah. so I don't know about that particular. Always rolled every time. If I had the choice, it was roll time. It was fun. But um, yeah, so I don't I don't know what they're gonna do. I think if they don't have an open an OGL. Here's the thing. I think the game is going to be, they're trying to make it heavily digital. And I'll be honest with you. I'm going to predict now it's going to be a flop. Well, it's going to be a flop. There, like, it seems a flop. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, we both said this, and I think maybe Professor DM might have had it in his video as well. Under fourth edition, when they first came out, they right before it came out, they switched up the licensing thing which is why a lot of people kind of got mad at them and yep. why Pathfinder was birthed. Mm-hmm. So um, it's quite likely that because, you know, nobody um, pays attention to history um, that they're going to do the same kind of, or a similar maneuver. I don't know if it's going to spawn a new game like Pathfinder, but mm-hmm. it's definitely going to fracture the audience again. Well, the I fan think- base again. Not that it doesn't. Not that it's already not already fractured in many ways. Mar Hockman says, "Yeah, it sounds like they want to force everyone to use a paid website service as only as the only distribution." Yeah, I, yeah. I think I think they want to control it. Um, um, I, I think they're. I think they think they can get a. I think they know that right now. Well, I don't know. Five E's probably losing a little steam with one. I mean, most editions when you announce the next one, they lose some steam. I wonder if people are starting to slow down playing 5e in anticipation of the 1 D&D or not by well, the books. Making a drastic business decision right now for them is a bad idea because um, the economy sucks. Any yeah. signals you're getting from the buying public are not going to be very good. No. Most a lot of people don't have spare money to be buying lots of books, especially not the really expensive ones that Wizards puts out. I mean, getting the PDF is one thing, but don't don't you pay full price for their PDFs of current current books? I've never bought uh, one, so maybe. Yeah, so th- it was like that for a while. Yeah, pay the same price for a PDF 
So we were like, yeah, we're not doing that. Right. Who would want to do that? It's crap. No. So, um, or it was maybe five bucks cheaper or something. Something silly. But anyway, um, right now, the market's not going to give you good signals. Yeah. And so if they, if they're going to base, if they're going to, so if let's say their sales are, are plummeting, it might be how uh, these, these companies signal they need to make a new addition because they've run out of whatever ideas or steam behind the current edition. So let's make a new one. Dude, I'm, I'm totally down with Flady. This is, I've said it before and I'll say it again. He says, Flady says, I hope it flops so bad they sell right away for a penny. I hope it does too. To um, Flady. No. Yeah, I'll be fine. I'd be happy if Flady got it. Yeah. He could make a better game than those douche nozzles. Right. Mm. Yeah. I mean, Magic the Gathering thing, I think, is a is a bad sign too, as bad as they flop that dude around. So they flopped on the card floppers. Yeah, that whole uh box set for a thousand bucks thing. Yeah. The cards. Oh, oh Malky says, um, neither one owns the other. Are we talking Hasbro Watsi? I think Watsi is keeping Hasbro afloat. I think Watsi's money's larger than just I think their their Magic the Gathering and D sales combined are better than everything else Hasbro's done. Are they one company now? Just Watts Bro. Yeah, I thought uh, Wizards was a division, a division. Yeah. Of uh, Hasbro, not to not totally absorbed um, IP wise, but you know, not a, not a sole, not a standalone company. As much as I would like to see them sell D and I don't believe that will happen. Um, Holy crap! What for that thousand dollar set? It's not even all of them. Yeah, I know. A few. Oh yeah, dude. We gotta talk about how Patrick sent me some uh of my cover art for my adventure. And I've got to get David Gile says he needs to see some more updates. He does. Uh I gotta send him the updated adventure, but Patrick's got the cover art done. I don't want to show that yet, but it's good. It's what? it's surprisingly sold out. <laughs> and how hard is it to print cards? Yeah. Wow. 60 cards. That's a deck. And they're right? random. <laughs> and they're Holy reprints. Crap. And they're reprints. Yeah, they're all reprints. Oh, yeah. Wow. Whose marketing decision was that? Some retard. Holy crap. I know what we'll do. We'll make some quick money by selling something super expensive. They're dummies. That's I mean, com completely a, a reprint. Now, uh, I wonder, did they sell any? Because oh, I mean, there are some, there are some fanboys that will just buy stuff. Oh, there was some. Someone was telling me there's some rich bat. Was it a basketball player that's way into that? Um, yeah, I, I think whoever decided that didn't know. You can throw a buttload um, of these reprinted cards. Uh, it, it's gonna. I would think it would devalue the market. Not that it necessarily does in comics, though. I mean, if, if you made a reprint of Death of Phoenix from the X-Men, number 137, you're not going to devalue that original comic. No, um, it's just the reprint isn't going to be worth anything. Oh, oh, here they go. Uh, they, gave no, they gave him one. They gave him one. God, two. Two. Hmm. Hmm. Well, we, um, Lee's, um, Lee Addison says, I sold out my MTG crap in the 90s as a, at a con. I was hawking them hard at a well-dressed lady because she seemed interested and made a fool of myself. Turned out it was Margaret Weiss. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, lady. You got some money, don't you? <laughs> That's funny. Hey, she liked uh, one of my Twitter comments the other day. Cool. What'd you say? Dragonlance sucks now. Um, <laughs> let's see. Something about murdering my Thanksgiving dinner. Mm. I can't remember. I can't remember exactly. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really dumb. I wonder if they sold any of them. Because some people are, if it says people like buying all of a company's or a brand's stuff in our hobby. So there are people, if it says D&D &D on it, they'll buy it. Oh, what is this? L says something weird. It says they also sent a free set to a big Yu-Gi-Oh player. He opened them on stream and his community made him delete the video. What? Why? Mm -hmm. Huh. That's weird. Oh, you know, I, I don't think I want to, even though David's here, I'm not sure we can really get into his discussions. That's kind of a long one. Maybe, maybe, maybe we can do it. I guess we could. We probably can still talk about him a little bit. Thought you didn't want to. Well, God, he had such. David and I had a good discussion on last last uh, uh, episode where we talked about AI art and dice pools. He and I went back and forth. I wanted to bring some of those ideas in, but I don't think I will because, man, we have such good content. I couldn't do it justice in the little time we're probably going to have left. Yeah. So we'll, we'll just talk about some updates and stuff and go from there, maybe. I mean, if you're ready to move on, I think we've kind of discussed this. I think thing. so. I don't, I don't, I don't really have any updates to give really for Big Geek Emporium, mainly because I've been out of action for a week. Um, the only update is, is I have a PC now that I can actually manage things with. <laughs> uh, I have got to get, um, I found out that somebody that I want to be able to make the con may have an issue with the date I was originally planning. So I'm going to check for pushing that back a little bit, maybe one week later in September. Um and I need to finish up my time. I've really been remiss. I just couldn't get motivated. I uh, have uh, written an article for someone that's going to be in a periodical. I'll talk about that soon. And hopefully that'll be out. What does that say? People that don't even play Magic the Gathering hate that 30th 999 set. Randy, his paid subs were going to charge back on him for promoting it. That's how they made him do it. Wow. Cancel their subs. Yeah. But as far as my adventure, uh, tragedy, the tragedy adventure, uh, it's it's not where I want it to be yet. I still got to run it past David again. Patrick has been kicking butt with some of the art, um, and it's looking good. Um, I cannot wait for that to get done. We can put it up on Big Geek Emporium. And then uh, hard, hard at the con. I want things to happen very soon. So, and I'll keep saying that, but I got to, I've been lazy the last two weeks. So I'm about to spin this around. So plus with three weeks off during Christmas, I'll have no excuse. You, you, you're going to like the covers, David. Patrick did a good job. So I can't wait. Good oh. deal. Good deal. That's all I, I just got. got a question on discord from Lee Adamson about saddle stitch. If let's see, mm -hmm. hopefully I'm sure he's still listening. Yes, we do saddle stitch. Mm. That is an option. Cool. It's Lulu that. that does the saddle stitch because that's who we do the printing through. So, hey, if you got if you've got a product you want to put up and do saddle stitching on, more power to you. We can have actually two. Hey, since David is here, yep. Um, Mr. David uh, Guile, um, your dice pool uh version of your game um are you planning on making that a hardbound available on biggest geekus or were you just going to leave it to the d20 um so an l asks if the saddle stitch is perfect bound um i david says he can make the Dice pool thing available as a hardcover. Whoever was asking that earlier. Uh, David, tell your wife that her art, I think it's your wife, Melissa, did a really great job. I love the layout of the book. It feels wonderful. Um, this is top notch, dude. Really nice. Can't wait till I get, a, get to absorb it all and get it to the table too. So let me... Um, I can go to, I think I can go to, um, not that one. Nope. Where are you at? Where are you at? Yeah, there. Um, let me see. Oh, you did the art. She did the coloring. Either way, love it. Yeah. 
Um, print. You mean take L's comment off? Shadow Stitch? You good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if I despise Perfect Binding Lee, but it's one of my least favorites. Um, yeah. Where is that at? Black and white. Yeah. Uh, hoo, 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 hoo. I'm looking for yeah. finding type. Okay. Um, wow. Okay, hold on. Uh, where is that at? U.S. letter. Greedly. That's a problem. You really can't lay it down on the table. When it's perfect bound. Oh, because it has the um it's just yeah, weird. You can't lay it no. flat. And you would have to like break the the spine to do it. Yeah. It's aggravating, it's crap. But yeah. I think they almost all do if you buy the old school stuff. Lee says um he bought a bunch of gazetteers off DT RPG and was enraged when they came. Yeah. I mean, they're okay to read, but they're crap to kind of, you know, you got maps, like the way they do like the I thought about buying the buying the Ravenloft um perfect bound just to have as a play copy. Then I realized, no, that's poop. That's like all it's not gonna work at all. So I'll just use my old school one. I'm not gonna be selling it anyway. So next Halloween, I think I'm gonna be running. Ravenloft for a couple of couple of weeks. Maybe the month of October will be a Ravenloft revisit for us. I've been wanting to do that for a while. Yeah. So David put up the list, but it doesn't indicate in that listing whether the saddle stitch is considered perfect bound. So I'm trying to find what option um, makes that. Oh, man. So what I'm looking at is uh, Lulu's site, and uh, they can you can build a book from their options, but um, none, of the, none of the combinations I've put together so far unlock the saddle stitch. <laughs> so I can't tell whether it's perfect bound or not from the picture because they have it, they have it uh, covered up. They have it grayed out and covered up with option not available so i can't see the the product very well so i'm not sure if it's if it's perfect bound or not um there's a picture have, I found on the web joe if you look on our camera there there's a picture i found i don't know if that helps anybody perfect bound versus saddle stitch so like i'm yeah i think l's got the right of it saddle stick is like a magazine right yeah and i i, I ch chose comic book to see if that would unlock, but it wouldn't. So who knows? Right. Oh, oh well. Oh, oh, maybe that's what I did wrong. I think I put wow. in the wrong number of pages. Okay. Wrong. Wrong. I was being wrong. Anyway. Yep. So. Dead air. We are going. So. I guess we are not really caring a whole lot about the future of WotC. No, I don't think so. I don't think it's the crowd seems like mostly here is like, yeah, I'll be honest with you. I would love for them to implode. I would love for them to lose everything. I would love for D and D to be sold to almost, almost. No, not almost. I can think of a dozen people I'd like for, uh, to get D and D besides WotC. I would love to like D and D again. But it would be nice. Yeah. It would be nice to, um, but it's not, we, we can still love D and D yes. because we have plenty of old D and D books. We can access and use and house rule them away into oblivion if we want. Um, and judges guild. Yeah. Lee Addison says judges guild is still out there. Are they still around? Yeah. They're kind of toxic. In a yeah. lot of ways, I'm. Yeah. I mean, not. I'm not using that in the way that the progressives 
I'm not labeling them as toxic people, but um, hard. They're, they're not know, good. To, they're dangerous to touch right now. Right. Well, you associate with them, then they're to, they're they, it rubs off on you. Yeah. And uh, um, but you know, I don't really care. I mean, if they put out a good product, I wouldn't mind having it. Mr. Bob Ann says, what if Hasbro would sell to Amazon? Oh, yikes. Yeah, I don't know. Well, and just, and, well, here's the thing. Some things Amazon does are all right. Some things are not. So if they handle Dungeons and Dragons the way they've handled with um, um, Lord of the Rings, uh, ah, yuck. Mm -hmm. But if Amazon... Um, well, and this is the thing. Has, I don't know how much Hasbro has directed Wizards of the Coast in mm -hmm. their efforts. Right. Um, apart from just saying, hey, you need to be productive. Um, so I don't know. I think this is what it's going to be the long and the short of it. David Gow says, make the D&D &D you've always wanted and just play that. Yeah. Right. I think so. I think so. Yeah, I've, I've heard this by multiple people, and it's probably right. Malachi says Hasbro will never sell D and D. They love the IP, dude. They can make their plushies and their little funny little dolls and goofy comic books and dumb movies that may not ever go on. Yeah, Flady, uh, Amazon is supposed to be good at print on demand, but that's for the individual. Uh, we can't make use of Amazon's print on demand or uh, print on demand thing that they do. I can't remember what it, what it's called. Um, that's just an indiv on an individual basis. They don't have a Lulu can um, um, serve as an individual. You can go to Lulu as an individual author and have your books up on their website. But you can we can also access an API, and that's how we do print on demand through Lulu on our site. Um, but Amazon doesn't provide anything like that. Plus, Amazon will always get a uh, Big cut. Lulu doesn't take that big of a cut, I don't think. I think they're, although the prices have gone up, shipping went up. Um, oh. So, which is no good. But that's the way, I mean, that's just the times we live in. Hey, know you know something? This, I'm sorry. I just thought of something completely, not completely unrelated, but connected. Uh, David just added Bruce Lombardo, asked Bruce Lombardo Dix Division, you're making a game too. He is. I will be. David has. We got folks on here that probably are going to. I would love it if one day, if Big Geek Con, we're assuming it'll happen. I feel like it's going to happen this year. It becomes a real thing. If all these people made it, and that's all we're playing, if we're playing each other's games. That Why not? Be, that would be super Yeah, awesome. nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing wrong with it, yeah. Yeah. Being Bruce and his sweet Pathfinder 1.5 edition, that'd be awesome. Or whatever he calls it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised. There was a, there was at some time a paper issue, issue with uh, getting paper and um, ink is pretty much a petroleum product, isn't it? So ink and paints, um, we use, it, I mean, if that's the case, if they're made through a petroleum based process, then all that stuff is going to go up. So, and there's some talk about some kind of um, um, strike happening with uh, the tr uh, trains, um, and uh, you wouldn't think trains would be a big uh, impact on our economy, but uh, some very large percent of distribution happens through the rail yards. Yeah, it's very large percentage. Oil-based paints are petroleum-based. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. So, any, any, uh, I would say the the books that are produced, there's probably some petroleum products in it, some to some degree. So, um, get, uh, oil when oil gets more expensive, everything gets more expensive. I don't know that there's a shortage. I think that there is a not distributed. They're not, it's not being distributed. <laughs> uh, I think it's there. Bruce at uh, uh, Dick's Division says train strikes. That's 30% of logistics in America. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. it's That's significant. 
you lose 30% of your um, distribution, you, you get screwed. Yep. Yep. Lots. Tr well, so uh, I think that there's a di part of our distribution that happens by train and then a part of it that happens by truck. Yep. And either one of those gets disrupted. It's everything goes up. Okay. Yes, the oil issue is definitely, Bruce, is definitely a manufactured crisis. There is no need for it to be an issue. Yeah. All right. What do you so, think, dude? You think it's time? I feel like it's time, man. It's pushing 10 o'clock. We've done pretty good tonight. I had a good time. God, yeah. it was good. People were, I just loved the discussions tonight. We were good. Yeah. House rules was intriguing. Hear everybody's thoughts on it. I knew it would stir some opinions, and that's always fun. Right. So uh, if that is all, then if you'd like to support our show, please like subscribe and share us where you are listening or viewing the show. We have lots of places where you can uh, support us at. All of that will be in our show notes at, or in the video description. So uh, check those out. Should you want to support us in some kind of way, um, you can always share us. Last week we got house ruled to three hours. Yes, we did. <laughs> so, all that being said, is there anything else from you, Mister Randy? Guess I'll see you Thursday, brother. Final Alrighty. session, of OSC. Try to kill your character and end it well. You don't have to try hard. <laughs> hard just fourth level. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, this is Joe, and I'm Randy. And remember, if you can't be big like us, then be geeks like us.